All right, so now we're continuing the breakfast trend and in your breakfast repertoire, you always need to have this recipe, which is blueberry muffins. Uh, blueberry muffins are a thing that I can really just call back on from my grandmother making, my mother making, myself making, especially throughout college, especially on a Sunday morning or a Saturday morning or either a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, you get the point. Um, but what we're going to do today is make homemade blueberry muffins. So the things that you'll need is butter, all-purpose flour, we have baking soda, we have eggs, we have milk, we have sugar, and then of course blueberries. The first step in making homemade blueberry muffins is that we need to cream our butter and then also our sugar. So now all I'm going to do, this is actually room temperature butter. You can call it softened butter, but it has to be room temperature. You do not want it hot and you do not want it cold. And so what I mean by room temperature, I can press into it very, very softly and my finger goes all the way through it. So now I'm just going to put this in the bowl. And butter is good for you in a lot of amounts. So what I'm going to do first, before I actually put the sugar in, I'm going to whisk that just ever so slightly. Just to loosen it up a little bit. And now with the sugar, I'm going to pour in a third of the sugar. Yes, that is not sugar. A third of the sugar. Whisk this. And now, with a third of that, I'm going to go back again. Okay. Keep going. Guess what? The last third. Now it's going to get a little bit stiff on you. It's just because there's now so much in the bowl. So again, pace yourself. Use a little bit of that arm muscle. Or you can use a handy dandy thing called a, a mixer. And so just give me about five minutes to do it by hand and I'll be right back with you. Alright, so now after I have literally sweated a little bit by uh, creaming this um, butter and sugar mixture, just like to show you that. It has now became very opaque white. And so now what I'm doing, I'm actually going to whisk around and make a little center in the bowl. And I'm gonna start cracking in two eggs. And ensure that you do not get any eggshells in there. If you do, make sure that you look very, very good. And that is why I actually crack it in the center of the butter after I've moved it around. Put that right there. So now I'm just going to incorporate that, going slower and then a little bit faster. And now the mixture is going to take on a little bit of a different form. It's actually going to get thinner, and that's what you want. I'm whisking everything until it's fully incorporated. Sorry about the cooking aspect. And so now this is the step. All right, so next we have flour and then also milk and a little bit of baking soda. So what we're going to do first and foremost though is that with the blueberry muffins, half of the blueberry muffins that you're going to use, what you're going to do is actually put them in a bowl, separate bowl, there's a reason for this, with a little bit of pinch of the flour. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a fork and I'm actually going to mash them. And the reason for this mashing is that whenever you have blueberry muffins, there's always sometimes a problem with, say, your cousin or a family member, your brother or sister, you're both eating blueberry muffins and they get five blueberries in their muffin and you only get two blueberries in your muffin. You really wish that you had the other blueberry muffin. So what I'm doing now is incorporating it and smashing it because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it into the batter to help make sure that everybody gets the same amount of blueberries in their muffin. And the reason for the flour is that it won't stain the, uh, the batter because I'm putting flour around the smashed blueberries. And then also with the flour is that once I put it in the batter, it actually won't sink to the bottom. I'm going to pull my whisk out. Just knocking it off just ever so slightly. And now I'm going to add the addition of flour in thirds, but I'm going to actually use the spatula for that. 
gonna fold that in. And when you're folding, I'm gonna show you with my wrist, you're gonna go one, two, and then you're gonna come back with the third. I'm going to go back in, press some our all purpose file. And your mixture is going to get thick, seeing that we're adding all this flour, but we will thin it out with our milk that we're going to add. And the reason that we add the milk at the end is that if we added it right after the eggs, is that the batter would be too thin and so the flour wouldn't incorporate fully. And again, it is getting thick, as you can tell. And now we're just adding our last bits of flour here. All right. there. And again, it's still going in the third pattern, so you're gonna go one way, one, Dig down deep, two, you're gonna come back and go over, three. So now we have a little bit of baking soda, salt, because salt is always an enhancer, and water. And the reason for the baking soda and the water is that baking soda is a chemical leavener, and so it's gonna help the muffins rise, but seeing that you usually only put about a tablespoon to three tablespoons in, Guess what? It doesn't fully incorporate all the way through. But now with a liquid, it's going to incorporate all the way through, especially with this liquid as well. So we're going to add this. All right. And now we can start adding our milk. And again. dough is taking on a little bit of a thicker form, but we haven't again added all the milk. But the last third of milk, that's when you'll actually add the vanilla. So we're going to be doing two teaspoons. And again, we're doing depths of flavor here. And that's why I'm adding just this potent amount of now vanilla liquid at the end. this all in. Make sure all the vanilla is in. Okay. And again, continue to stir to make sure everything's fully combined to our spatula and we're going to fold it in. And now this gives us a base layer of having the mixture incorporated with the blueberries. And again, with the flour, it's not going to stain anything purple, even though blueberries are blue. As you can tell, no staining. I'm going to go in to the uh, container that had the flour, because again, I want them to have a little bit of flour mixed in. And so now I'm going to put those right into the bowl, and then I'm going to just lightly Dress those as well. And guess what? Our batter is now done. It is ready to go. Our batter is white, dotted with blueberries everywhere. And guess what? It's not stained. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to portion out um, six of those really quick. Always fill it three-fourths of the way. Never go above that. If you do, you have what they call a muffin top. Again, three-fourths of the way for it. Oops. And now we're going to bake those at 350 degrees for anywhere between 10 to 12 minutes. All right, so now we have the blueberry muffins. We let them rest in the muffin tin 
for a little bit to make sure that everything was properly cooked on the outside and you also had the browning as well. Uh, once they cool down to room temperature, then you can take them out, place them in a cool little thing like I did whenever you're serving them. But I'll be honest with you, if you put these five, or that's all we made for right now, or the 24, they will be gone within two or three days. Always make sure you keep a lid on them so then they stay moist as well. And they'll keep from up to two to three days, very, very moist. If they do get a little bit dry, just put them in the microwave, sprinkle a little water on top of them for about 10 seconds.